sit down and uh, we're moving right ahead. Uh, I might get started. I would now like to introduce to you Jeff Southwell from Leadership Plus. Now, disability advo advocacy is getting more challenging every day. Demand is growing and the rules are changing. Dealing with new situations challenges our knowledge every day. Yet there is probably someone, the hundreds of advocates across Victoria, who knows exactly what to do. How do you find that perfect person with the perfect information you need? Advice, support, technical, or just another view of a problem. Find out how to connect with other advocates in the sector to make, up, make all our work easier and better. Whoops. Thank you. That's uh, pretty much it, actually. I can go home now. Um, thank you very much. I'd like to talk to you about what we can do to make it easier to get in, at information that other people in the sector have actually got. Um, we've got a lot of people in the, orga in the organisations around the state. There's something like 100 people who are involved in advocacy around Victoria, either funded by the Victorian government or funded by the federal government. Um, whilst it is an ever-changing environment, the likelihood is that somebody out there will actually have encountered a problem that you're encountering already. The challenge is how to get hold of that person and find out what that information actually is. Um, a lot of this is being driven, of course, by the NDIS. The NDIS coming in has resulted in a lot of changes in the, the way the disability sector is working, the organisations you're working with, um, the, the nature of the relationship between our clients and the service providers, the service providers actually out there, the structure of the service providers, um, but also the NDIA process itself is very legalistic and complicated. Um, we started working with um, other agencies who are involved in providing appeals to the AAT for the NDIS decisions, and we found with a, a monthly teleconference that there are lots of issues coming up, comparing notes about cases, uh, explaining what case decisions had been, and found that it was useful to share more information between each other in between those sessions. So as a result of that, we set up a, a, um, a collaboration hub, in effect, where we could exchange information, um, set, compare notes, ask each other questions. So the question is all about information. Who's got the information about evidence? Who's got the information about what you need to apply to the NDIS? Who's got the information about how you get a particular piece of evidence for a particular condition? Um, what's the appropriate steps to make sure that your application to the NDIS is, is heard properly? What are the appropriate bits of information to support an, a, a request for a reviewable decision? What's the information you need to, to go to the AAT? And that can vary depending on the, the client you're working with, the circumstances around their particular claims, all those things. It's very complicated. So the question is, how do you find that person? Um, as a result of the pilot we did, the Victorian government has funded us to implement the Victorian Advocacy Hub. So we've set up a tool where any agency that's involved in advocacy, it's funded by the DHHS or NDAP, can log on, uh, become part of that community and st start a conversation. Ask a question, ask anything about the work they're doing, advocacy in general or NDIS in particular, or even a particular condition. Um, we've set it up with sort of several channels to have discussions about particular topics. There's something like 93 advocates already registered to use it. So somebody out there probably can answer the question already and somebody online already. What I'm going to do is just do a bit of a demonstration of it and just show you what it looks like. Um, and hopefully that'll be some incentive for you to actually have a look at it and try it yourselves later on. A bit of luck, the technology will work. So far, no good. So, just, is that visible enough for everyone? So what we have here is an area where we can just have discussions about anything. People can ask a question about anything at all. I'm sure my mouse would work. There we go. So, conversations about you know, anything you want. So we've set it up with various rooms. Yeah, so there's various areas about 
topics. So we've got general discussion, which might be useful. We've got things like AAT decisions, where we've recorded decisions made by the AAT about the NDIS already. So we've already put in summaries for individual cases as they've come up, so people can look at what the history is of a particular case, in case it's relevant. We've got some discussions about the NDIS and how it actually works. So there's things like um, provider toolkits, um, things about mental illness. Uh, we've also got previous things about pathways. So those are previous questions people have already asked. Um, might be something specific about Centrelink. Don't yet know if there's anything relevant about that. Um, eligibility questions. But in practice, I can show you some discussion in real life, if you like. So for example, this morning, there was discussion about um, safeguarding. Now, somebody out there may have already seen the session this morning, might already know about what we've been talking about. But the question is, we heard about safeguarding this morning, but how does that turn out, how does that operate in practice? What things might we need to know about it that are not yet, that we don't already know? And hopefully somebody out there will actually ask us that question. Long pause. While we're waiting for any response about that, I might just go. There's other things you can do, like search. For example, um, I could <coughs> search that, and that will pull up things like flowcharts. So. There are flowcharts out there that we found we've posted on here which has information about how to access the NDIS. Where is that? There we go. Now, all of these things are available once, they, once you find them. So this, for example, is a, a flowchart showing how you actually go through the various stages of, of, of uh, applying to the NDIS. So request to become a participant, getting access approval, getting it not approved, what steps you then go to internal review, what steps you then go to um, an appeal. So. There we go. So somebody's asking if anyone's got a code of conduct. Right, okay. So there you go. So that's some discussion that's already started. So I've asked a general question about safeguards. Rachel's asked specifically, has anyone got the code of conduct? Um, and there's the actual document. So again, that's something which is immediately available to, to anyone who's logged on. So there's all the detail you need to know about the code of conduct as it was met, discussed this morning. Another follow-up question. Does anyone know how to lodge a complaint? So another very legitimate question. We know that complaints have been discussed. How do you actually do it? There you go. There you go. So there's even more information about the actual details of what a complaint actually does. How to make a complaint, what complaints we do, so of course these things are available in the NDIS website, as Mel says, but a lot of this stuff, you get down to the very specifics, you need to find some particular uh, way of dealing with
Australian government and NDAP. Mm -hmm. So I would imagine, or we've so seen So the answer is no. The answer is no, yeah. Oh, okay. but, and I guess that's also um, in order to, because all those agencies have some sort of quality processes around their, their actual operations, that that potentially underwrites at least the quality information that's being discussed in something like this. Doesn't mean it's always right, but certainly it's easy to get. Um, anyway, so what I'd like to do is just, having done that, take any questions first. Of course, I'll ask you all a question. How many of you in the room have actually heard of this before? How many have actually signed up for it, registered? So there's four, four people who have signed up. So as I say, there's already over 90 people who have signed up. So if the, the balance of people actually sign up, well, we're probably talking 120, 150 people who are actually on the other end of the line if you're asking a question. The most important thing from my point of view, I guess, is making sure that um, people are actually using it because it really relies entirely on actually being used. Let's come back to that discussion. Oh, there you go. So somebody's working with a client who has a complaint about the service provider. Goodness me. That sounds awful. Wow. Anyway, so these are, these are the guidance. Yeah, so it depends entirely on people actually using it. There's information there, but there's no sort of process just to feed information automatically. It's about sharing stuff. So we're adding things like the AAT case descriptions as we, as we go, because that's useful to have. But beyond that, it's really up to the community to, to be actively using it and to generate the discussions about it. But um, for now, what I'd like to do is just ask any, you people what you'd like to know about it if you don't already know. So over to you. Hello. Um, I guess I have a two-parter question. Um, yep. The first being that obviously several people in this room who work directly with advocacy have heard of this type of prototype, which I think is really good. But uh, my question is, how are you getting the knowledge out there that this resource exists? And um, are you still in the process of fine-tuning it and retooling it so that it's user-friendly? Do you take on feedback from users? what is entailed in that process? Cool. Um, in terms of promoting it, um, standing here today for starters, uh, um, but also we've basically emailed invitations to all the agencies in the state that we know of, which is as far as I know all of them, um, and we've run some sessions, training sessions with groups of advocacies and advocates, and we're happy to do as much of that as, as necessary. So whatever is, is useful to promote it and to help people learn to use it, we'll do. Um, in practice, it's pretty much a self-education thing. You turn it on and it takes you through a tutorial and from then on it's just up and running. Uh, in terms of refining it, we're basically using a, a tool set for uh, managing discussions, which is, come, is as it is. So all we're potentially doing is um, uh, refining the, if you like, those discussion areas on the left side. We've created a whole bunch of channels which are just discussion topics. It may make more sense to have fewer of them or more of them, um, but that's really, anyone in the community can actually do that themselves anyway, so it's not something we need to, to be prescriptive about, but certainly open to feedback. Anything that we, in terms of how it could be improved or what information should be added or anything, that's something we're happy to, to take on board. Hi, I'm Mia. I work at WIDAS, which is the Youth Disability Advocacy Service. Yep. We use the Slack platform at our um, organisation just to commu communicate amongst our um, staff. So I'm familiar with the way that it works. But you mentioned that emails have been sent out to invite people to join. And for some reason, if we've missed it, can, how do we request to join again? Um, how do we access it? I would say just contact me. That'd be a starting point. Um, yep. But I, that does raise a question how to do that more generally. Um, what we might do is get Daru to promote a link on it as well because it's something that's sort of very complementary to what Daru does. Um, and you know, if we just put a reminder there and a link there, then that should be, make it possible. Does anyone else have a question? 
I, I have a question. Um, are you able to search for previous discussions and, and see things that are, are, are previous things saved that you can kind of look at? Yes, Similar absolutely. Similar questions are asked. You can um, search on anything in the, in the that's been in the public discussions. So anything anyone said at any point, you can you can search on, and that'll pull up both the conversation you, you've had, if you've had a conversation, or the topic that other people have talked about. But you can also filter it. You can do things like search just for things that I've talked about. Or if you know that Melanie's done a particular conversation about a particular topic, you can just say, just tell me things about uh, incident reporting that Melanie's posted. So you can pull up something like that. So. Any other questions? In terms of how we might improve it, I'm also open to any suggestions that people might have in terms of things we could be adding to it. Um, we've, as I mentioned, we've got things like the um, decisions about the AAT, NDIS AAT decisions, um, but there's potentially other things that we could be adding that are, that are useful to have as a general resource. Um, obviously, we've put in links to diary discussions and things like that, but any other ideas, we're more than happy to hear about them. Does anyone have any other comments or questions about the app? I've used it myself. It's actually a really good tool to um, just get instant information about what's happening as well. So I found it really useful. So if you haven't done that, please sign up. So thank you, yep. Jack. Yep. So yeah, I'll just reinforce that point. Please, if you haven't already signed up, um, contact us and, and we'll get you signed up. Oh, there's another question down here. Sorry, I just thought it might be helpful to mention though that it does work as a telephone as well, so you can actually talk to those individuals. Yes, yes. So that, I that think that that's um, something that's handy if you wanted a more general discussion. Just that is a good point. I forgot to mention that. There, there is also sort of direct messaging capability, so you can. Um, have a conversation with an individual which is not public to, to everyone else, so it's just another good way of exchanging information. Given the nature of the work we do and given things like confidentiality, there's lots of situations where you might be asking in a general forum, does anyone have any experience with this particular type of case? And somebody might, but then might be appropriate then to have a more uh, narrow conversation offline. But again, that's just connecting people, you know, finding the right person who's got the experience and making it possible for them to help you with your particular issue. So. Thank you, very good point. And like Jeff said before, we will circulate all the information about the app and all the resources from today on Dari's website and we'll let you know when it's all up. Um, just wondering whether others, whether this kind of um, system is available in other states and if there's a view and or if there's a view to do something with the national equivalent, just given the NDIS being national and the commission, you know, a few things are nationally. Um, it isn't, this particular thing isn't available nationally, but I know that um, Mary Mallet from DANA, the national body, has been looking at it closely and has been keen to promote something like it. And of course, we stand ready to help. So, but yes, it certainly could be, there's no reason why it shouldn't go national anyway, um, particularly around things like managing NDIS appeals, where that's a very specific tool set, uh, skill set is involved. So, so absent that, thank you everyone for your attention. We, I look forward to seeing you all uh, logging in in a very short space of time and having active discussions and making use of it. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Now, if everyone could just hang tight for about five minutes so that we can set up for the next presentation, and then Natalie will let you know when we're ready to go. So just five minutes, talk amongst yourself. Thank you.